BCGhostTowns.com Happy birthday, Cornell Forks, celebrating its 150th birthday the summer of 2009. Bring the family and camp just off site. Okay, BC Ghost Towns is here with uh, Mr. Robin Hood. And you've been associated with the restoration of the Canal Forks for how long? Uh, probably the last five years. They did one restoration job down here, I think it was about 15 years ago. I didn't have anything to do with that one. And then I've been involved since we got the community forest in like to enhance our tourism, the giant industry tourism here. Yeah. So how are the budgets holding up with the amount of work that you've done around here, which is uh, is extensive. Well, yeah, we, we this project is for uh, started May, the crew started May 19th and they go to October 31st basically because that's when we can't get down here anymore. It's impossible to get snowed out. Yeah. And, uh, and we just line up what we think we can bite off for a year. We're starting to, I mean the first couple of years it was a pretty big guess of what you can get done in a year. Yeah, I guess. You know, the, the two buildings here took a whole year. And now this year we're working on eight of them and we're ahead of schedule, so. So the learning curve. Learning curve, got an experienced crew. We got uh, two trainees and, and four experienced guys on the crew. What uh, what do you have slated here uh, for next year? We got the Quinnell Forks project. We got uh, uh, $100,000 to double the size of our museum, and likely. We're gonna put a theater in there and then uh, Videos like yours, hopefully, we okay. people can walk in and hit the button and see what they want to see. Okay. With a choice of about six or seven five-minute films. Try to collect some of the old stuff on our archives. We're going to start cutting the old trails over a French snowshoe and that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and upgrading some of the wreck sites. In the future, you may get to the point of restoring every building, at least every ruin that we see here today. Yeah. At the, some point. The, the, what we were trying to do with tourism plan is, People come to Likely, there's not much in the past, not much harm to do if they know about Cornell Forks. You come, and we have a Class C provincial park, which means we run under the Parks Act, that we get no funding from the government. It's been volunteer since 1962. I mean, we have some of the best wildlife viewing, we have three kinds of salmon running in our rivers, and we have mining history. Now, hopefully a whole bunch of little tour companies can run out of a destination hotel. I mean, you could do that. There's something for everybody, almost. Well, it, it's a better representation of early mining history in this province, really, than Barkerville. And the reason being, of course, they were more established there. Yeah. They actually started painting buildings. And here, hey, you're too busy getting ripped. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to we're trying to just make it so they stand here for another hundred years. Because if we didn't do these projects, this place would just about be gone right now. Yeah, There'd be I, nothing I to see anymore. I know, you're stabilizing you the buildings. Some and, of the old relics laying around. Is there any way that private citizens can uh, can contribute? What happens in the, in the caribou is everybody's got something in their kitchen or their living room that they grab when they're traveling around the province. Right. And our museum, and likely, is we supply an area to show your stuff. We don't ask for it to be donated. Right. We just supply a showcase. And if a museum doesn't change the stuff that's in it, then it's just a... So, I mean, if people have stuff like that, then they'd be willing to go to the museum for a year sure. and then come again. That's, that's huge. That's a good idea. That kind of stuff. But is there any, uh, is there any avenue for, uh, say, a corporate uh, citizen, uh, say, a, let's say a big mining company or something, could they say, well, I'd like to sponsor the restoration of one building, say, Missy Kim's or something yeah. like that. Is there any way that they oh, can get a tax deduction? Oh, we can work with them, right? Well, it, it just it was just a, a curiosity because right. I mean, certainly I could I could see some mining companies. This would be the time for some uh, good PR. But the thing that, that isn't sold enough yet, and I noticed Parkerville's really jumping on it by trying to put in a Chinese section at Parkerville. This is the only Chinese ghost town, the original Chinese ghost town in Canada. And, and what kind of population of Chinese would, would have been here? Five hundred people. Or so. oh, five hundred. Yeah, or less. So it's mostly a Chinese town by that time, with a couple of uh, government workers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Has there ever been any um, digs here on the site that you know of? The only, when we restore a cabin, with the footprint screed the, the footprint, the document where we found it in the footprint, and our annual report from doing the project each year, and all that stuff is in the museum. 
Yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible the amount of stuff you find. Yeah, uh, hopefully we'll encourage them to do that. Yeah, it'll be good for the kids too. There's more money coming for next year as far as you know? To this point, we haven't applied for next year yet because we're still working on this year. But I mean, we're we're an aggressive little community there. I can see that. <laughs> you, know, well, you have a small population and you've got volunteers doing this, volunteers yeah, doing well, that. Everyone holds the stuff close to their heart, so yeah. the town is just really happy that the government's finally seeing the light. And the, uh, the big help was um, people at Williams Lake got community futures. They they see the vision, okay. and they're the ones that push for us to get the first funding. And, and they came and, and showed you what you could do with a little bit of effort. Yeah, they took a chance on us being a little guys, you know. And yeah. Can you do the paperwork properly? And can you handle money? Uh, what what kind of dollar value do you think uh, has gone into Canal Force to get it to this stage? Probably half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. Yeah, over the years, I think three or four big projects. Um, some of the projects are maintenance as well as construction. Right. So so like one year we were heavy on maintenance, so we did lots of lawn mowing and that kind of stuff. Right. The thing that we really could use some help with is is making access for seniors and, and handicapped people. Right. You know, that's a big thing down here. The, because the vegetation grows so fast and it's not done proper and maintained, it just turns back into junk. Even with the, the material that we build the road out of. Yeah, you know that, yeah. that seems important to some people. That's good. Yeah, well, that, you could wheel somebody across. You that. know, to make accesses around the buildings, or at least up to the buildings. Yeah, well, you the know, doors are too small to get uh, wheelchairs. wheelchairs yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> the Chinese didn't need a big door. And then the other big dilemma we have right now is is signing them. You know, we we would like to do some interpretive signage, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you got one side of the tourism that likes to have the interpretive sign beside the cabin so they can take the photo of both. Right. And then you got the other guys that are real keeters that don't want to see that sign when they're at the building, right? Well, I'm, I'm probably the, of the second group. Yeah, I'd rather right. see the sign inside the doorway yeah. or something. This is for time travel. Yeah, that's right. And uh, when you walk along here, that's what you, you want to see, is you want to yeah. go back in time. Yeah, you and uh, you start having, uh, I'm not interested in the Disneyfication of Quinell That's Place. right, exactly. That's right. Yeah, yeah the roller that's coaster is just over there. And you had a very successful... The roller successful coaster is the road on the way down. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> and you're, you're happy with the success of the, uh, of the events that were here this uh, week? Oh, they did really well. What kind of population do you figure you got down here to, they, to see that? They uh, figured they had 300 people each day, okay. which is good for this country, especially for this. And uh, I think they raised two thousand dollars for our fire and rescue. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So it turned out really well. So, Robin, what's uh, what's the plans for next year? Well, hopefully we can do a couple buildings every year. Has been my motto. Uh -huh. You know, do something. If uh, if people come up on holidays and they come a second time and it looks the same. There's not so much interest to come a third well, time. There's lots of change in yeah, just one year. They, yeah, they you. see stuff happen each yeah. year, then they're going to tell their friends, oh, man, you're going to... So know. it's a 150-year anniversary, the real 150-year anniversary year, yeah. for, for Kamel Forks. Yes. Is there anything slated for that? Are you going to have another... We, we're uh, going to start planning in September. We hope to do something. Um, probably run it on the back of the miners cap out okay and maybe yeah. put some music back into it and yeah try and turn it up a little bit for next year okay yeah, yeah. storytelling and hopefully and that would be like yeah that. that would be the ultimate yeah but cool. like a chamber doesn't meet in the summer so we need to get in september and we have a, a paddle fest right. on the 19th of september okay. which we get kayakers from all over the world because we have world-class kayaking in both rivers. yeah it's rough water yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, well I, and the thing that i didn't know is all the comparable rivers in North America are damp. So this is a this natural is river. So this has got, some, I'm not a paddler, but this is some this big is. trip for the Cochran to come because they're natural rivers. Who would have thought that this little gem stuck in the way in the back of the caribou country could have so much versatility? So the biggest year for Quinell Forks had to have been this year. Yep. yep so and the, it's, what's going to be bigger will be next year. Hopefully. And the year after that. Yep. Well, you're doing a fantastic job, Robin. I really appreciate you talking to us. Thank you for and we'll, coming. And if we can be uh, any help whatsoever, you just contact us. Well, and like I say, come on back and we'll show you some other... I'll plans. bring some stuff from my private collection and lend it to the museum. There you go. Okay. You have your own key and your own cabin. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thank you, Thank sir. you very much.